Hey Aussie gamers and honorary Aussie gamers from around the world. Welcome to episode 72. Today is Wednesday the 8th of April 2015 and you're listening to the Aussie Gamers Express podcast, the podcast that respawns more than Jesus. I am your host, Luke One, and joining me as usual is my good friend Thorncliffe. How are you, mate? I am very well. That's great. And also I'm joining going us... to hell. Going to hell. We're all going to hell. <laughs> about it. And, all jo- and also joining us is our other great friend, Red. How are you, mate? Yeah, good. Thanks, Cobber. Good. Uh, Red, how was your Easter? Uh, yeah, it was all right. I didn't get any chocolate, which probably helps because I'm fat anyway. What? <laughs> Why no chocolate? Ah, oh, because we spoil the kids. Oh, okay. Do you what? You don't steal any of theirs? Well, uh, no, I don't really eat chocolate, bro. What do you I eat? Really don't, uh, cake. <laughs> <laughs> chocolate cake, chocolate milk, Milo, chocolate mousse. No, <laughs> all those things I just ran off then aren't really my favourite foods in the world. I love cooking with chocolate. I just don't really like consuming it. So, yeah, lots of coffee and video games. Mm, wow, my trust for you has plummeted. Well, it should have fucking skyrocketed. At least you can leave half a bloody chocolate bar in front of me, and you know, if you come back and it's gone, you get one automatically blame the fat prick. Yeah, but you see, I, I don't leave chocolate bars in, in other places. Like, there is only one place I leave chocolate bars, and that's my mouth. <laughs> <laughs> if it's out of the wrapper, it's gone. Uh, I'll eat it if it's got popping candy in it. Oh, yum. Those, yeah. What are they? Uh, those marvelous creations. Creations, yeah. yeah that's it. Great. Sean, how was your Easter? Uh, was good, uh, spent doing uni. Oh! So, yeah. I did a, did an assignment on, um, assholes in gaming communities. Okay, so it was a, an essay on... Legal well, it was a biography. <laughs> <laughs> yes! <laughs> oh, I so wish I thought of that now. <laughs> Uh, oh, the troll himself. Mm. Oh, well, that, that sucks. I, I uh, enjoyed quite a few days off work. I'm actually still off. And uh, and went to the Easter show, the Sydney Royal Easter show. Mm. I, uh, I put a... Sorry? Exciting? It, well, it was fun. My do- I've got a six-year-old daughter, and she enjoys it. She had a really good time on the rides and all that. But what I was interested in, because they advertised like a tech center, whatever they wanted to call it, I thought, oh, they might have some, you know, some cool gadgetry things, talking about video games and technology. Um, I went there, and there was a beanbag and... Two and Game Boy. <laughs> no, there wasn't even a Game Boy. There was a sign that said, like, tech or something like that, and they were, like, showing off these mad screens that you can put on your mobile phone to stop the screen from smashing and stuff. Uh, like gorilla grip shit, whatever but, gorilla glass. Gorilla glass, yeah. It was so terrible. <laughs> Massive letdown. Oh, and they had uh, one of those, what, what would you call them? Kind of like a roller, a virtual roller coaster where it's got like the little pod thing that's on... Uh, like oh, a, hydraulics. On hydraulics that moves... They had that as well. I'm like, whoa, tech. <laughs> VR of the future. Yeah, because I haven't seen that before. It's not in chaos down at Panthers. No, anyway. But, uh, <laughs> no, look, I, I enjoyed it. It was fun. It was good, good fun for the kids, but it was good to get back home to um, some video games. So I had uh, a pretty decent Easter. But uh, who wants to tell us about their game talk first? Okay. Go, Sean. I finished the game this week. Oh, Woo! wait! It's not, not Bloodborne. No, <laughs> no I played Bloodborne. <laughs> Murdered Soul and... Suspect, right? Yes. All right. I finally yeah. finished it. It's um, yeah, really enjoyed it. I, you know, after like the discussions at length that we've had about this game and that, I kind of wasn't expecting too much. I wasn't um, going in there looking for a mind blowing experience. The story was great. Uh, you know, going around the, getting the collectibles and and solving the the crimes and all that kind of stuff was you know, it was mediocre at best, but uh, overall the the story made up for it and it was was really good. I enjoyed it. I think the benefit for you was is you went in knowing what to expect. Yeah. So you weren't going, you know, thinking, oh, this is going to be the most amazing experience. You knew that. Well, we told you. I told you that it was a good story. Mm. But the gameplay elements are very lacking. So you knew what was going to happen. Yeah. So you, you probably had the best sort of advantage going ahead to enjoy it. Mm. Yeah. And you know what? The concept behind it is great. I I really like the 
the whole uh, crime solving aspects of it and looking around for the clues and uh, doing the collectibles and all that, I just wish it, it was a little bit more challenging. Can uh, I guess what your favourite part would have been? Yes. You absolutely would have loved possessing the cat. Yes. <laughs> How cool is that? <laughs> you could meow on command. I, I think the people who there was made a that, meow button. There was a button to meow. Press like yeah. X to oh, meow. You that and right meow. <laughs> <laughs> you didn't have to do the dishes or cook or get a back rub to get him pussy. You just had to do a button. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. There's a whole section of the game where you get to play as a cat. There's less whining. <laughs> <laughs> oh dear. Meow sauce. Uh, yes. Uh, meow sauce. Uh, Uh, then I've I've played a bit more Bloodborne uh, got past the second boss with the the help of Red I'm going through like the the third bit with some hunter up the top that keeps on shooting at me whenever I get up to him he he kills me so I've kind of put that down for now to while I finished Murdered Soul Suspect and I'll go back to, to that again this week we're talking about it last week and uh, the uh, Souls games. I downloaded uh, Demon Souls. It was oh, one excellent. of the PlayStation Plus games and uh, fired the, the PS3 up and downloaded that the other day. That is hard. <laughs> it is very unforgiving. Bloodborne's um, a walk in the park, isn't it? Yeah, yeah. <laughs> this one here just goes, you know what, like you're walking through this area and there's a hole in the ground and there looks like there's something that like it looks like you've got to go down there because there's like this little cloud thing and all that kind of stuff and i'm like all right you know walk over there yeah okay that's in the ground step off the thing boom you're dead I'm like oh all right no worries reload it run back to the bit again and get around the corner and just someone comes out and one hit kills you and like they just make it so that you need to it's like a, a game of memory that you had Very. to go the level to, yeah, just memorising the level, going, right, somebody's going to jump out at me here, and then you remember that, and then you go around the next corner, and then someone does the same thing, and you die again, and it's just over and over again, a game of memory. I was at a, just a bit more Minecraft. Um, it's giving me the shit, so I'm trying to do one of the trophies where you've got to hit a skeleton from 50 yards away, and... It's just not working for me. Come on, I, I can help you do that. That that's I've got a set up to do that. Yeah. I'd, I'd yeah. have to rebuild it, but I can help Indeed. you with that. Yeah. And, uh, yeah, having issues with my Vita again with the the charge and that. I I think I'm going to have to pull it apart and see if there's a a battery issue with it or something because it's it's just not charging after the little drink incident that my daughter gave it. So I can fix it for you. <laughs> what are you laughing at, Red? Oh, just the, gonna, the platter of options out. that you, you've got to pick from to help him fix it. Now, well, yeah, the, I'll fix it for you. All it'll take is you'll have to provide me with a hammer and two hundred and fifty dollars. <laughs> yes, <laughs> there we go. The hammer's for me to have fun with the Vita. I, I the two hundred and fifty dollars well is me buying your new one. Yeah, I might as well just um, pay one hundred and fifty dollars and get a PlayStation TV. Yeah, well, because oh, that's about the same as your, your Vita, isn't it? it runs <laughs> off the Vita. No, a PlayStation TV is not going to replace a Vita. No. No, look, some of the games aren't compatible. Okay. And it's not portable. <laughs> it doesn't have a screen on it. Yeah. yeah. True. Yeah, if if <laughs> if you want my advice, I would suggest getting another Vita before a Vita TV. Or yeah. Station TV. Mm. Should have been called a Vita TV. Yeah. It should have been called a Vita Mini. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, and um, well, yeah, I've I've bought a couple of little games on the the Easter sale on that, and just downloading them to to start them this week. It's been pretty laxed with um, what I've been able to play with Uni. So, what'd you get? Mm. What'd you buy? Uh, I got uh, Alice Madness Returns. Oh, PS3. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Well, it was one game that I always wanted. I kept on looking around for it, and when I was in like JB Hi-Fi or anything like that, I'd have a quick flick through, and I was never could find it. 
and it was like six dollars and i went and yeah okay i'll buy that and uh i caved and uh bought peggle 2 for playstation <laughs> that's a top game yeah it's awesome mm. so now i've got it on pc on the xbox one and on the playstation nice Good old I'm just waiting for something now to decent to come out to, to play on the Xbox One. So, yeah, Tomb Raider. Don't hold your breath. Tomb Raider's yeah. coming. All right, yes. Anything else, Sean? No, no, that's that's about. All right, troll it up, Red. Ah, right. Should I or can I add before I tell you what I've been playing? What has been accompanying my games this week is Spotify. Oh yes, oh, me yes. too. Me too. <laughs> It is absolutely fantastic. Yeah, it's good, eh? It has a massive, massive library. There's compilation, albums, singles, the works. You know, if you go into, like, your M&Ms or your Limp Biscuits and stuff, and you go across and you can <laughs> pick individual Do you just songs. listen to music that's got something to do with food? <laughs> I see what you've done there. <laughs> pick on the fat prick. <laughs> M&Ms and Biscuits. <laughs> Uh, and being from Tasmania, that would include Twisted Sister. <laughs> Dang. Well, but sister yeah, you, you go through, and you remember how when you uh, used to go buy a single, you know, from the music shop, and they'd have the song, and then maybe another song, but then they'd have four or five different remixes. Yep. Well, they're all on there. Oh yeah. You just go select the single, and all those remixes are on there. So, yeah, I've been hitting up the old Men in Black uh, soundtracks and oh. everything like that. So, yeah, I've really enjoyed that. But what I've done this week, I, I played some uh, cricket today, so I could at least mention that again. Um, you can't mention I, that because we're going to cut and paste it from last week, remember? <laughs> no, it's oh, less yeah. work. Keep going. I, I participated <laughs> in a Call of Duty competition today. Did you win? <laughs> no. <laughs> <laughs> Fair to say, I suck. So you're just the best of a bad bunch with Aussie Games yeah. Express. <laughs> yeah, man. <laughs> um, I finished Bloodborne. I did. I finished Bloodborne. Ooh. Hang on, hang on, hang on. All right, continue. <laughs> Uh, I also put a few hours in on a new character on Bloodborne to help Sean. So basically, I'm specced up to where Sean is now for probably the next oh, two years. <laughs> so I'll, <laughs> I'll, just I'll, I'll, always, I'll have a character there to help you out if you ever feel inclined. And also, I've begun my new game plus. One thing to note, if you do... not know, There's no spoilers attached here, but if you pretty much finish the game and you know you finish the game and you want to explore some more or go check out all the hidden places or do the rituals or anything like that, don't go to the final area because you go to the final area. And it's the, game... just, the best way to know that you're at the final area is the building in Hunter's Dream is on fire. Yes, correct. Okay, It's not really spoiling anything because the story doesn't really revolve around that. But if the at building all. is on fire, save you back up your save to a USB. I think that's where you're going, right? Yeah, yeah, because you you finish the game, and then it's just like a spinning top. You just go straight without asking you if you want to, without taking you to a cutscene, really. Oh, you get the credits, and without taking you to the main menu, you go back into the cycle where you're waking up right at the start again. <laughs> so, yeah, there's no exploring after that. So, yeah. Yeah, yeah so all the shortcuts are all shut, and everything's all back to normal. Uh-huh. Yeah, so you just beat the game. Congratulations! Fuck you, right back to the start. Yep, yep. And it's twice as hard. And we're going to make it harder. Yeah. Yep. Um, I played some Last of Us multiplayer again. Streamed some of that the other day. That was heaps of fun. Love getting back into Last of Us every now and again. It takes a couple of day, a couple of games to get the groove back on, but once you're in that groove again, it's awesome. But I've got a fucking massive gripe, man. Massive gripe with this bloody game. They've just released a whole new bunch of DLC and everything, and now a major part of that purchasable DLC is weapons. And we're talking scoped automatic weapons, which are your primaries, not your purchasables, and mm. things like this. And it, they are way overpowered. You can actually pay to win. Like, you can get a trench shotgun and an automatic rifle now in online. 
And that's really hard when you got people running around with revolvers with three bullets and a freaking bow and arrow. And you were saying that there's now weapons that'll make you bleed out. Bleed out the crossbow. You hit you hit with a crossbow. If you don't go and get a med pack, you'll bleed out. Yeah, so that changes the game. That that it wrecks does. It. Oh shit! But like I said, there's one way to fix that. That's to have an old school lobby. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That'd work. Well, that's that's how I played Call of Duty today. I played Call of Duty with no XOs, no XO abilities. Thirty rounds of search and destroy. Yeah. Oh, well, that's a shame. Yeah, um, I got invited by a dude off the page, Ben Ross, uh, asked for a bit of help on Zombie Army Trilogy, so I kicked that in the guts, and I went and spent an hour with him, an hour and a half with him, trying to get past the first level on Sniper Elite. Uh, Sniper Elite, uh, Zombie Army on Sniper Difficulty, even. Yeah. Um, yeah, very hard. Wow. That first level, that boss area at the at the end at the church. Oh yeah, 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 where they like come in waves. Yeah, and there'd be like two or three of those big blokes, wouldn't there? Yeah, and you know how we fix that and we change the spawn limit to one player. Yeah, two of them came. Yep. with waves and waves for one person. Ooh, too hard, mm. too freaking hard. And then, thanks to a. Uh, our very good friend repping me. Yep. I uh, got to play some Battlefield Hardline last night. I got that in the mail. Nice. So I played a bit of multiplayer Battlefield last night. And I must say, shit's all over number four. Yeah, it well, that was broken. Was, it was broken. Yeah, very, very much. I very much agree with that. But, and it, it occurred a bit of a trend. It did have a day one update. But the day one update was 100 megabytes. You know, whether it would just be region-based or whatever, server-based. I'm not sure. I'm not that savvy. I just get on and go, <laughs> quick game. You know, so, um, well, yeah, very impressive. Out last oh. November, so it is a good thing now that they kind of went, well, look at all the shit that we went through with Battlefield 4. Yep. Delay it, get it right, get it all on the disc, get it perfect, and, and then we'll ship it. There's... Well, if that, if that was their plan, they bloody got it right. Yeah. I'm, um, is EA turning over and you leave? This is what we're going to see. <laughs> well, all they did was delay the game and then charge you twice for it. <laughs> <laughs> if you want all the stuff, it's $180. Yeah, man. Same or 169 like... or something like that. Something stupid. Wow. It's 69 I saw the price of it on the store and I went, oh, $69? Hang on a minute. For the premium? Yeah, Why stuff. is it $69 for the premium? Oh, hang on a second. That's to upgrade to the premium. <laughs> That's just the season pass. $70. Yep. Fuck off. The only thing I will say about Battlefield, I think they drop about six map packs as opposed to the three or four that you get with your other games. Sorts of DLC. They do drop a fair bit and the maps are quite large. But $180? No, nah, not happening. Not in my books. Yep. Parsley. And, and the best for last... I played, whoa, Dave. <laughs> <laughs> so did I. It's such a cool game. You can have it. You can have my yeah. copy. <laughs> it's very frustrating and quite difficult. And if you don't get yourself into a rhythm, like I found myself, you can get yourself into a rhythm with it. But, uh, yeah, once that's gone, you just look out, just hold on tight. But, yeah, no, nah, it's a bit of fun. You, someone, I think it was you, Luke, piped up and said, oh, it's free on the store. And I'm like, oh, free? Pause game. <laughs> go to the store and get the freebies. But, yeah, no, I've had a bit of fun with it. I think, like, there's probably about eight pixels to 60 inches of TV. So, yeah, had a pretty okay. busy playing game. Parsley, yeah. All right, uh, I'll quickly run through mine. We mostly covered them. I finished Bloodborne as well. Yeah, because two out of three ain't bad. <laughs> Uh, yeah, I uh, I was fortunate enough to um, make a... What are you giggling at, Sean? I just got it. Uh, <laughs> What's that? Life. He just got it. Yeah. Oh, right. Oh, yeah. Just, yeah. He's just got something to do with food again. He's going meat life now. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> anyway, I was uh, fortunate enough to know about saving my game onto a USB before... I uh, ventured off to the uh, the final part of Bloodborne, 
and there's a there's a choice i guess and uh, i made a choice and decided i didn't want to make that choice anymore so i went back changed it and finished the game <laughs> that will probably make a lot more sense to people that know what we're talking about people that haven't played it or haven't finished it yet will probably sort of might go over their head but um i don't care that's the choice i made and i was able to do it so i did <laughs> and you're happy with it i am i'm happy with it i got closure because the game gave me a trophy which is an end game trophy and that was it i got up out of my lounge i ejected the disc i put it back in its container and i put it at the back <laughs> the back of my cabinet <laughs> and then just went through on your xmb and loaded every other game behind it so it was completely off there get, as well get the fuck <laughs> <off>. yeah yeah <laughs> you know what? i didn't actually do that but i'm going to <laughs> you give me the idea but that game will start wars yeah yeah so anyway i finished it so i'm happy beautiful congratulations hopefully bloodborne 2 is in 2020 <laughs> <laughs> that's very funny i purchased um mxgp the compact version which is the like the official moto motocross grand prix game or whatever on, on the playstation 4 it's only about seven bucks at the moment when it says compact, it fucking means it. It is not joking. It is compact. You get one track. You get quick race only. So no championship, no multiplayer, nothing. It is one track and you go quick race and it will automatically give you a random bike and a random rider. And that's it. Go for your life. <laughs> and you can level up your because you've got like a, a leveling with XP. You can level up as much as you like. That's it. It just does nothing for you. It just does nothing no. for you. No. No unlocks. Gay. Okay. Yeah. How much is the upgrade? Upgrade's about 22 dollars. I think it's about thirty dollars in four at the moment. So yeah, it probably probably end up costing an extra twenty two. But the thing is, because I've only got one track and I can't even choose the different riders, I don't really know if I like the game enough to pay for the rest. Yeah, fair call. Cool. Well, like one race. Yeah, okay, I came first. That's fantastic. Like, Nick. I, it's, I can't, re yeah, I want to try, at, at least three tracks would have been good for a compact version or whatever. For, I don't care if the bike rider or the or the bike is random, that's fine, but a couple more tracks would have been nice. But, uh, but anyway, I played that, it's, I don't know, make up your own mind if you're into that sort of stuff. I also tried out Escape Dead Island, that's the, uh, the Dead Island game that came out last year for... The previous generation, so the Xbox 360, PS3, and PC. Yep. It's not bad. It got shit canned. I looked at looked up some reviews of it and got some places gave it two out of ten and stuff, but I don't think it's that bad. I'm playing it on PC and it doesn't look half bad. I think I've been uh, using the Steam sharing and playing it on my 60 inch TV in the lounge room, and um, <laughs> it's uh, it's going. It goes quite well. Have, actually, uh, Sean, have you tried that? Uh, no. but Because I know you've got your almost dead laptop and you've got your tank PC. You yeah. should try that and play some of your games on your telly, man. Mm -hmm. Your laptop's got your uh, HDMI, does it? Uh, yep, yep. Yeah, man, give it a go because my laptop isn't much chop, right? It can't really do too much because it's not... Being a laptop and also not a high-spec one, I can't really run anything on it very good. But when you run, use the, the home in-home sharing, what it basically does is think of like um, uh, remote play on your Vita. It basically yeah. does that with your PC. So oh, okay. think of your PC as the, the PlayStation 4, for a good example, and think of your laptop as the Vita. And it the game will run on your on your PC, on your main PC, but it just mirrors it onto your other con on other computer and you can chuck it up onto your telly. So you can just... It, all of the processing power is done by your main PC. It's just being mirrored up onto your TV in another room and it plays perfectly. Zero latency, but I was using Ethernet cable, mind you. But yeah, zero latency, it felt like I was just playing a normal game. So it was really awesome. cool. But, but anyway, Escape Dead Island, it's not too bad. I mean, it's it's definitely a, a step down from the Dead Island games, but it's it's okay. It's It's got a really cool art style to it. It's got that uh, cell-shaded Borderlands slash uh, the, the Walking Dead Telltale style to it. 
and yeah, it's it's got a, a bit of an emphasis on stealth and also the melee aspect as well. And it's intriguing. The story seems pretty cool. The the voice acting is much better than the Dead Island. Is it Island better game. than the first one? Absolutely. <laughs> it is. And there's, a, there's a couple of uh, characters that have that have come across from the first one. You know that Zian Mi or whatever it is, Zian Mei. The yeah, so. she's the Asian chick in the red. Yeah. She's yeah. the the bladed or sharp edged weapon. Uh, expert she's the character i actually picked she's actually in it as like a overseer she's through radio and talks to you and stuff like that so it's got a, got a couple of things like that and I, i'm enjoying it look it's not it's not the greatest game in the world but i'm enjoying it uh what else well, I played... you'd, you'd, you'd have to be happy with that now sorry to interrupt right. at least you've got a, a dead island style game now we don't have a, a release date for dead island 2 anymore yeah, well, no, that's it. Um, that's that's been delayed indefinitely, hasn't it? Yeah, they they still suspecting this year, but as we've seen with well the plateau of titles this year, Batman, Battlefield, we're just talking about. You know, it could still slide to next year. Yeah, I mean, I'm really looking forward to the next Dead Island game, but um, you know, look at the same time, I'm not going to be starved for games. And oh, much no. prefer the game to work really well. I know that the the first Dead Island games had a lot of problems with performance, whether it be on PC or the consoles. So if they're taking the extra time to make sure it's fine, then I, I, I've got no qualms with that. There's no dramas. Mm. Yeah, cool. I'd rather it works. Yeah, absolutely. Because I mean, I'm not a big Battlefield fan, but I know that if I was. And with Battlefield 4, I'd have been gutted. Yeah. You know, and same goes with Uncharted. If that came out broken, I would be so devastated. I'd much rather wait than have a fucked game. Because it's sad, was it? Even though if it gets fixed down the track, it still mars your experience. So it, Assassin's Creed still haven't finished it. I said well, beat the first sequence. Unity has hurt for, for, this, for the whole series. I, I'd... I don't want anything to do with that game. It's going to have to be something super fantastic to draw me back in for the next iteration. Yeah. I can just imagine how devastated you'd be if, you'd be if uh, Uncharted didn't work. Yeah. Well, here's, here's a, an insight as to how I feel with the Assassin's Creed games. I was uh, entering all my games into that app on my phone that I was telling you guys about to keep a log of the games that I own. <laughs> yeah. I mean, what do you laughing at? I bet I was just anticipating you saying the fucking app didn't even know what it was. <laughs> no, 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 nothing like that. No, but I added in, because I own Black Flag, I yeah. added that in, and I added in Unity, and it's got a section there where you can choose your own rating, as to, how, you know, like one to five stars. Yep. I gave Black Flag five stars. I, there's yeah, nothing, there's nothing wrong, there was nothing wrong with it. I thought it was a fantastic game. I didn't... I didn't I didn't put great in for you. To do. <laughs> you can't. That's how differently I feel between the two games. But anyway, all right, move on from that. Uh, Trials Fusion. I played some Trials Fusion this week. Uh, I pumped some of the tunes from Spotify as well while I was streaming. Um, met a guy while I was streaming as well, and now we're in love. No, just kidding. Uh, <laughs> And he, he sent me an invite and goes, come and come and try this track. And he brings me off into a track that he's made. And, jeez, I'm like, what are you doing to me? This track is impossible. Did my head in. But anyway, I finished the track. But that was a very, very hard track. Jeez, the, the tracks I was doing on that stream, did any of you guys catch it? I don't think. No, I didn't even realize you were streaming. Yeah, I streamed the other day and um, I was doing some hard tracks. But I got to the to the end of most of them. I was just doing the like the user made ones from the Track Central. That was Have you done the DLC ones? Yeah. You finished the hard one on that? No, 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 not not the extreme one. I've tried it, but it's pretty hard. I I didn't really play it too long because I didn't want to. You got the extreme track on the previous Pre- DLC. On the didn't previous you? one, yeah. I got it. Yeah, I will have another yeah. crack at it. But those extreme tracks are fucking extreme. <laughs> Go figure. Yeah, <laughs> but um, they they require a lot of control. But uh, I'll get there eventually. Uh, whoa, Dave, I tried that as well for about two minutes and thought, whoa, that's enough, Dave. See you later. <laughs> uh, um, 
Dying Light. I played some more Dying Light last night. I spent probably two hours running around trying to get that trophy, humana, 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 <laughs> where you got to rescue 15 survivors from Rice's men. I got to 15, and the trophy didn't pop. So another one that's broken. I did do a bit of research to find out what was going on with it, going on with it, and somebody suggested there are some occasions where you can rescue two at once. Yep. Where there's two on the ground, two um, like hey, survivors. Yeah. Survivors. They've suggested that the ones that that you rescue where there's two clock up on the statistics as two, but only but count towards yeah. the trophy as one. One encounter, yeah. So I might need maybe two or three more to get that popped because I don't remember encountering two at the same time very often, but I do know it happened once or twice. Well, that's probably could explain why my count was at 21 before my trophy popped. Did you get a lot where there was two? Yeah. Yeah, see, that that may be a, a pretty spot-on explanation for it. Either way, if that is correct, I still think that's broken. Yeah, well, it says, say, 15 people, doesn't it? 15 survivors. Yeah, it doesn't say 15 um, encounters. encounters. Yeah, so it's still broken, but I'll endeavour to keep going. But it's still bittersweet if I eventually do get that trophy. I've still got to contend with the, the safe zones. Fuck, you're resilient. And Because the, the, the safe zones one, I've, I've done that now four times where I've done all the, the safe zones from scratch with you. And it's still yeah. pop. I've done it countless times on my own, and it's it still doesn't pop. So I'm hoping that one might be like that one for you, the collectibles, where one day there'll be an update. I'll load up the game, and it'll just pop. Yeah, but it, yeah, it's come too. down to a point where I've put that much time and effort into it. I deserve a fucking platinum trophy, and I want it. It's exactly what I said last night. I was actually gutted for you last night because you come back on the chat and you're like. Hey guys, I'm like fucking what happened? <laughs> and then yeah, I found out you're playing Dying Light, and I'm like, oh fuck, man, I'm so gutted for you because I'm sitting back going, it's hard for me to be happy that I've got it because you'd probably, in hindsight, deserve it just a touch more than me. Well, you shouldn't be happy, and I don't want to hear about it. And if you are, then you're fired. <laughs> just kidding. I love you. I love you. All right, uh, quickly moving forward. Um, Dead Rising Watchtower. I, I watched that movie. Ah, uh, Rob Riggle. Yeah, no, not Rob Riggle. No? <laughs> they advertise that way fucking rudely. Because he's, he's, uh, he's in the movie, but he's not Frank West, is he? No, he is Frank West. He is Frank West. The movie is set after the Willamette Mall issue, which was the original Dead Rising. Ah, uh, yes, yes. And then there's another incident now. And all he is, is he is... He pops up, like, for two minutes every maybe half an hour. He's being interviewed about the incident that's going on because he's got experience of what happened at Willamette Mall. Uh. And he just chucks in a... <laughs> so, basically, you saw all of his stuff in the preview. He, could, he would have been the best to have in the game, in the, in the movie, because he was funny. But he's not, he's not the main character. He's got some other douchebag reporter guy that's in... In the uh, the quarantine zone. So that was the most disappointing thing. So that on top of it, it was B grade. It was fucking terrible. But in saying that, it was still on the same sort of resonated well with the game. Like they got it right, but it doesn't translate well to a good zombie movie. Because you know, in the game, how it's very over the top, like with the gang members that have the all the shit made out of different shit and the weapons and stuff. Yeah, it just comes across as cheesy. Mm. So, I, I didn't like it. I thought it was shit ass. <laughs> <laughs> but go ahead and watch it. It's available now on <laughs> Crackle or some shit. Yeah. <laughs> Super Mario 3D that World. Would, that would involve turning the Xbox one on. No, just download it. It's easier than using the, the Xbox. Uh, Super Mario 3D World. I played some of that today. You know, I haven't played that game since... For, for, for 12 months. Yeah. And I never got past the third world. It's probably got 10, 15 worlds or whatever. So I deleted my save game and I started from scratch today and I'm going to have a crack at it again and try and finish it. Excellent. It's a beautiful looking game. 
got to get back into my into my uh, Nintendo. It's way too neglected. Mind you, it's got Netflix on it too, and that works really good on the Wii U as well. Really? Yeah. Excellent. Yeah. And you can flick it between the TV or the controller, so it's pretty neat. Uh, and I played some Minecraft as well. PS4 it's, or PC? PS4. Now, I played on the PS4 with uh, some Spotify going and just started building a real random shitty building that went looked horrible and was all great in my head in my head it was, <laughs> it was fucking it, ga- it was a game of thrones castle man mm-hmm. and then what i put in the game just looked like a lego block <laughs> and it really it was really disheartening i'm like that looks shit <laughs> playing trials <laughs> was that in uh, creative or yeah, yeah i just do yeah. it in creative mode yeah Cool. We'll have to jump on. I'll, I'll jump in with you. Yeah, yeah and so we can build Lego blocks together. <laughs> yeah, we'll build one of those um, things I was telling you about and get you that fifty meter thing. Ah, uh, yeah, yeah. It's easy. It's piss easy. Totally easily. Uh, but that's about it. That's me. All right. Let's go into some news. Right, first up in news, let's talk about snow. No, just kidding, not 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 informal snow. <laughs> snow, remember that game Snow? Yes. The yes. Uh, closed the virtual, beta. Hey? Yeah, the virtual one. The what? The virtual skiing one, was it? That's right, yeah, it's a skiing game. Uh, the closed beta is now here. It's been in early access for ages. I didn't even didn't actually know. I don't I don't know if they've advertised it or if it's just like a closed thing. But uh, yeah, they're going to be uh, rolling out the beta keys now. Have, did, I, I can't remember if this was the one I signed both of you guys up for, or did you guys sign up for it? Uh, no, I, I didn't know. It was a long time ago. Yeah, when I, I was only fresh. Yeah, it would have been probably 12 months ago. But anyway, anybody that has signed up for the, the closed blader will be guaranteed a key. They're rolling them out, though, so they're not 100% sure on when. However, if you don't want to wait until it's rolled out, you can purchase an, uh, a, a key yourself for 10 bucks on Steam, and that'll get you two keys, one for you, one for a friend. The only silly thing is, I don't know where that $10 goes, because once the game's finished and released, it's going to be free to play. So why would you pay ten dollars for the beta key to play the game while it's not at its best to then get it for nothing? <laughs> I, I don't know. I'm just going to uh, <clears throat> just wait for my key. But uh, yeah. also, everyone that participates in the closed beta, they're going to receive an exclusive Sean Petit Red Bull helmet as a reward in the game. So I'd imagine he's some awesome ski snow person. Mm, let you push the submit device. button on the closed beta. What's that? Uh, I just clicked on the closed beta sign up, but it won't let you submit it. Oh, maybe it's only for people that have already entered and they're not taking any more. I'm not sure, but uh, I'll get some footage of it when it when I do get my key and and show you all how amazing it is or isn't. Who knows? Excellent. Uh, Diablo three is getting another patch. Yes, right. oh, that's actually... not that's not paid DLC. It's not another expansion. It's it's free stuff. They're and it's it's already live. I already have it. Awesome. So uh, new treasure goblins, uh, legendary item improvements, uh, improved crafting. So with your one thing that used to to shit me, and I'm sure it used to shit you as well, Red, was when you um, built your your gems up. Yeah. Have to build a certain amount and then go to the next level and build it. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Yeah, yeah. Now, if you've got enough all the way through, you can click on the top one and it'll just... Oh, it'll that's heaps better. Yeah. Um, there's a new uh, cap for blood shards as well. What uh, is it? I'm not 100% sure. It doesn't have the, the exact number here. What was it? Uh, 4 99 Or 99 I think it's 99 What's blood 99. shards again? Uh, you use them at the... You, you buy stuff with them. Yeah, yeah, I know what they yeah. are. Yep, yep. Yeah. Um, 
and uh, it says there's an increase in the, the blood shard cap by earning new personal records in solo greater riffs. Um, Thanks. <laughs> oh, yeah, well, we can. <laughs> yeah. uh, there's uh, new legendary potions, uh, a couple of modifications to armor sets for Wizard, uh, Barbarian, and the Demon Hunter. Pizza. And, yeah, so there's a, a whole whole list of stuff they do. It, it's massive as you you've seen from the the previous one so uh we'll we'll post up the the link in the the podcast notes and check them out uh i don't know if you guys know you may you may do uh a lot of the 2k games and all the nba ones that i've had since they started dealing with this thing called uh vc it's virtual currency if you will and that's basically your not the Viet Cong, no, it's <laughs> your virtual currency. So if you start a game and you save it online and you start it online sort of thing, it'll all get saved to the server at 2K. So instead of having experience, you get this virtual currency and your virtual currency is used to buy this, that, upgrades, eh, all that sort of stuff. But uh, it gave them the opportunity to then microtransact or... You know, so you can go in and buy 10,000 VC for 10 bucks or something, if you will. So the other day, 2K shut down their servers on 2K14, so last year's instalment into the game, and <laughs> thousands of people lost their save files. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Which would piss me right off, because had I not had 15, I'd still be playing 14, because like cricket and like your soccer's and... Everything like that, all sport games really, and golf and whatnot. You can keep coming back to them and continue your career with your created player. And mm-hmm. if I was just to get up one morning, especially being a two-year-old game, and lose it, whoo, I'd be pissed. But they've turned around now and said the the shelf life of their servers per game is 18 months. They've now upped that to 27. Oh, that's short. Months. Yeah, that's short, isn't it? Two years, three months for a, a, a yearly released game. Well, I reckon I sp- that's all right. Yeah, I suppose because of the type of game it is, but it's still quite short. Yeah, well, considering people are still cranking out on Black Ops 2. And well, I can still play um, Modern Warfare 2 and my, get my stuff's all there still. Yeah, see. That's a yearly yeah. release. Kind of. It's not. It's every three years now. I've uh, been bored. Yeah, fair cool. Fair yeah, cool. But yeah, so that's, that's how they've gone to try and fix it up. Is uh, there? Yeah, they've up their their shelf life of their servers for each of their games, which I think is a positive because these games can be played for two years. And there's not much you can do about that when it's a cloud save sort of thing like that on the servers because you can't back it up because it's no. just online. Yeah. Well, the thing is, if like I had this problem once with my initial PS4 before it died with NBA 2K14 I went into it and I couldn't get an internet connection and the game was not connecting to the server or whatever it may be and they said do you want to continue in off- offline mode once you make this decision you can't go back to online mode and I'm like oh okay and they physically get you to type with your controller on the, the widget keyboard thing on your screen agree and you agree to it so you, you can physically take your game from the cloud and back it up on uh-huh. hard drive. But once you've done that, you will never be able to get that character back on the cloud. A little bit more of a personal experience there than news, but there we go. <laughs> All right, next up, Day 6 Man... <laughs> I can't say that name of the game without thinking of... Uh... Have you time on trials today? Or... <laughs> About what? I thought you said Even without time. thinking about your time on trials today <laughs> with your new friend. I'm yep. confused. Well, you're talking about day sex, aren't you? I am talking about day sex. <laughs> <laughs> What's that to do with my time on trials? I'm lost. Huh? Yeah, with your new friend. What are you doing with yeah, your new friend? Say, didn't you say you, you met this bloke today and you're in love? <laughs> oh, fuck, that was random, dude. How was I meant to understand what you were talking about? <laughs> I'm not taking. I I often miss things and it goes over my head, and I will accept that. That that was just fucking fired well over my head. I was <laughs> never gonna get it. 
Anyway, Deus Ex Mankind Divided has been confirmed for PC, PS4, and Xbox One. It's going to be a sequel to the previous Deus Ex game. I think it was uh, Human Revolution. But uh, anyway, Mankind Divided focuses on the growing tension between the non-augmented people and transhumans. Following human revelation, there we go, revolution, sorry, I've got it written down. Protagonist Adam Jensen, as he joins an international police task force dedicated to hunting down augmented terrorists, bad guys. Jensen will be able to choose his own path to deal with the terrorist threats. Though significantly improved enemy AI will introduce new wrinkles to both stealthy players and those who prefer a good shootout. That's pretty cool for people that are uh, a big fan of that. Did you guys ever play uh, Human Revolution? No, but I will play. I will give the opportunity to any current gen FPS games with the amount of fun that I've had with them so far. It's kind of like a FPS slash third person game, though, isn't it? Okay, it's uh, it's you. You've played uh, Rainbow Six Vegas Two. Oh yeah. You know how it's kind of like that, where it's a first-person shooter, but like it'll go into third-person mode when you're yeah. up all and stuff. Yep, yep, yep. I think that's what Human Revolution is. I think it's like uh, that. I've got it. I've got it on PC, and I think it's on PS Plus as well for my PS3 as well. I have like Crisis as well. Yeah. Does that do that? No. Cause just... Yeah, because you had your third-person aspect in that, didn't you? Maybe I was wrong. No, I don't think so. Ah, uh, never mind. Shut read. But yeah, they're also doing something really, really fucking weird. This is Square Enix that I'm talking about. So this is kind of two news items, but I'm going to amalgamate them into one because I think they are related. But they've got this thing going on on, on Twitch at the moment. It's it's a, like a weird teaser program thing or project, if you will. It's called Can't Kill Progress. And what it is, if you, you find it on Twitch, it's just some dude like passed out in a small like cell and he's just laying on the ground and i think using twitch and all that it's interactive you can change the cameras change the camera angles and it's just a dude there and every now and then he gets up walks and screams and hits the walls that are electrified and all that sort of stuff and then like passes out on the ground again and and it was there's like a timer i think and it's going for about three days which is probably puts it at tomorrow very weird but apparently at the end of this countdown it's going to be the like a release for a new game and oh that's where i'm thinking it's probably this deus ex game but i don't know we'll find out by next week hopefully but um it's a bit bit weird don't you think <laughs> yes but very yeah it sounds a bit and you've probably got people sitting there waiting to see if it changes yeah i i, I can't imagine i watched it for about five minutes but that was in the background while i was doing something else i just had it streaming yeah but, uh, and that's all it was and it would just sort of cut using it'd be like a an effect on it like it was playing up like you know like a vhs with all the feed, feed and stuff. And shit, yeah. yeah and it was like switching cameras and stuff and it was just okay that's weird and i hope that when they're cutting that that's it's just a, a looped video it's not some poor bloke who's laying in there for three days yeah, I've seen your screenshots on the page today. They, they look fantastic, especially the breakdown of the weapon and everything like that. I like that sort of shit. Yeah, well, that part looked very... Uh, Crisis-like. Yeah. Crisis-like, yeah, with the gun. So. But, um, I'll, I'll pro- well, I'll probably remaster that one before the... <laughs> <laughs> revolution before this comes out anyway, I could imagine. Uh, Rockstar has uh, found a very unique way of basically uh, punishing you for cheating or exploiting a, a glitch that they've got in their GTA Online. So uh, when you upgraded, if you, you had the upgrade from uh, last gen to current gen on, on GTA, you got a, a car called the Duke of Death. Now, a glitch has been going around that's allowed you to bring it into the online. It's only for single player, right? Yeah, it's yeah, yeah. a single player car. But they've, they've found a glitch that enables you to bring it into online and drive around and use it in there. So uh, uh, Rockstar's gone ahead and, and patched over it, but instead of just taking it out or, or removing the glitch, <laughs> uh, they, they just thought, well, you know what, we'll just leave the glitch in there. And uh, if you bring the car into the, the game, the second that you go into the car, it will explode. <laughs> so... 
they just put a bomb inside the car. So if you use the glitch, bring the car into the, the online mode, the second that you go to jump into the car, it, it just explodes. And you you, you die. You There's, there's no... Um, yeah, taking down a certain amount of health, it, it instantly kills yeah, you. Yeah. So, <laughs> have you seen the video of the yeah, dude yes. that it first happened to, and he gets his torch yeah. out on his gun, and he's looking for the fucking plastic explosives? <laughs> <laughs> oh, there's nothing there. Fucking gets in yeah. again. Boom! <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> that probably were. Look, I like that. I think that's a that's a good way of fixing problems. Ah, oh, it's very rock star. It is very yeah. tongue in cheek. Very yeah. It's probably less work too, just to decode it every time in online that it's just got a, an ignition bomb on it <laughs> yeah that's awesome it says here in like one of the official statements that they got here um on the like the gta wiki about the car it says that the uh, durability is excellent as the duke of death is able to ram and push other vehicles off the road with ease and the car's bodywork is very strong uh the duke of death can uh it's got basically it's, it's indestructible but it can still be destroyed by like a sticky bomb that's why the bloke was looking for the plastic yeah. explosive or a direct hit from the rhino cannon so uh Which yeah is why they don't want any multiplayer yeah yeah fucking trolls <clears throat> scrolling through the news uh a few days ago and we were talking about it and whatnot and so i thought i'd bring it up i figured out how weeks he beat bloodborne <laughs> <laughs> Righto. <laughs> Before I'm we went to bed, try this. Yeah, <laughs> no doubt. Well, you don't even have to like try, try. Your PlayStation's on all the time anyway. Yeah. But, but if you leave your console running and Bloodborne running for an, in excess of twelve hours, apparently, and it's been there's a lot of video footage here. It makes all the bosses much easier to beat. So whether they can. Can, uh, giving you congratulations for sticking at it and trying or whether it's a legitimate bug or glitch in the system whatever you may call it apparently all the bosses become piss weak after 12 hours of gameplay okay so if you just leave it on yeah sit in the hunter's dream and then um, yeah 12 hours later come back and take on the bosses apparently you, do, yeah, you just cut through them like hot knife through butter <laughs> I need to be able to get to the bosses, though. So. <laughs> <laughs> You're at the prickiest part of the game, but, man, you know, you said you got that hunter on the Gatling gun. That's where I'm stuck with my third character. I hate that part. <laughs> Once you get past there, you'll be right. I'll have to get someone in to help you. I'm done. That game's off my bucket list. Fuck it. <laughs> I tore it off the bottom of the bucket list and put that bit in the bin. Off the bucket list, and now it's on the bucket list. Bucket list! <laughs> Although I did finish it, I had I crossed it off, so yeah. it's fine. I just didn't want to look at it. <laughs> All right, good stuff. That's a good tip if people are having some trouble. <laughs> some people might actually run into that just in fucking in the in the, in the course of actually playing it. Yeah, because <laughs> I know I nearly would have. <laughs> the reboot, remaster, reclassified, re smashed out on the new console, Tomb Raider of 2013. Is has just become the most popular entry into the franchise's history with just over 8.5 million copies sold worldwide. Yeah, that's easy to understand considering that's the only one that I ever finished and enjoyed. And it's the and only, one, the only one that's cross yeah. platform. <laughs> yeah, cross platform. Oh, big talk. It was originally a PlayStation. Oh, yeah. Exclusive, the, the old yep. ones. No, but the, the, like they have been since released on, on like Steam and stuff like that, but they were never on well Xbox. Are you sure? Or was it? Yeah. Cool. The very original Tomb Raider was PC, and then PS1. Yeah. <laughs> oh. Wait, so, no, sorry. Yeah, you got Underworld and that were on Xbox. Yeah, they were, weren't they? Yeah. Oh. Yeah, but none of the yeah. original one, two, or three. Oh, I know. I get a Tomb Raider wiki out then. So I always thought of them as PlayStation. Well, yeah, they were originally. Yeah. But I don't think the the reboot was the first. No, well, Underworld wasn't. Oh, well, Underworld was on Xbox. I know that. Yeah. Yeah. Anyway. No worries. Uh, well, yeah, look, I, I agree with that. It's, it was a fantastic game, and I can't wait for the next one. I'll be getting that on, on the Xbox One just so I can play it first up. Mm -hmm. I'll wait. Well, you kind of have to, don't you? Yeah, oh, <laughs> on computer. Oh, on computer? Nah. Is it going to uh, be on PC? 
Or yeah. is it exclusive yeah. to Xbox and PC? Or... No, it's exclusive to Microsoft. Oh, okay. Yeah, so I, I, I got the original Tomb Raider game on PC, but that was because I was fed up with how terrible last-gen games were getting. So I thought, I'll just play it on PC, and it'll be like next-gen. <laughs> and it was. And you got next-gen, and they gave it to you It looked pretty awesome on, on <laughs> PS3, so... I disagree. I didn't like it at all. Hey, the hair! It was all the hair. Yeah. Tris X all the way. <laughs> <laughs> They've uh, released this week that Augusta National and, well, with that, the the Masters is going not going to be in uh, Rory McIlroy's PGA Tour 15. So is, is that a player or a place? Well, a Augusta, place. Augusta National is is the home of the Masters, which is is currently on right right now. So it's uh, one of the big four major tournaments for the year, yeah. and it's was it well it was first released. Uh, correct me if I'm wrong, Reed. I think it was 2011. Was Augusta. the first year that had Augusta in it. On yeah, the EA. Yes. Yeah, the EA ones. Yeah. So it's all a licensing issue. So pretty yeah. much like uh, a lot of the the stadiums and stuff that uh, people have. They they buy EA will buy a license to to use them in the games. Uh, their one for Augusta has run out. And it looks like they're they're not going to get the the license back before release on it. They have, however, said that possibly in the future they'll be able to uh, get it as a as a DLC for it. And I'm just hoping that if they do that, then it's going to be a free DLC. But fuck, it should be. We were talking about DA turning a new leaf earlier. Sorry to interrupt, but chime in with you. Yeah, it should be. uh, If they can't get the it for release, then it, it should be given. If they're, they're going to create it once they get the license for it, and you can't do the masters with your created player, or you can't do the proper rostering system like you used to do with the old games and career mode, without mm. that really there. Yeah, because you can't win the four. No, you can't win the four majors. Yeah, is that the four skins? <laughs> the rare, rare. The, yeah, yeah, the four skins where you play the two ball off the stick. <laughs> <laughs> Yes, we'll get this game now. <laughs> we'll nearly talk you into getting it. Oh, oh, yeah. I, I said I was going to get it. Yeah, cool. Yeah, no, I'm in. Yeah, right. So, uh, yeah, hopefully we'll, we will see it. But uh, they're, they're trying, but they, there's, there's no way. They're, it's due out next month, and it there's no way they're going to get it in there. So, yeah. Cool. Well, I don't know what you're talking about, so it won't bother me. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> it's a beautiful course. It's got a ball. Really, say. really unique <laughs> holes in the course. So, yeah. <laughs> this one's yeah. deeper. You can't, say any, you can't yeah. talk about golf without sounding dirty. Just ask Tiger about mm. unique holes. Yeah. <laughs> and driving. He can't do either. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> okay, look, let's go into our, our, I guess this is kind of like our featured news item of the week, but uh, Call of Duty 2015 has been, I believe, heavily teased. Oh, yeah, they promised it too, and he's coming through, David Vanderhoe. Yeah, so... Uh, I saw something on Twitter uh, probably about two weeks ago, and it looked like it came from a reliable source within Treyarch saying what we're going to announce, but... Um, yeah, it said that the the next uh, Call of Duty will be a BO. There you go. Did you say that? Oh, bro. Huh? He wrote no, it, yeah. Wrote it, okay. Well, yeah, there you go. That's pretty pretty, um, pretty damning stuff there. But what's come out at the moment, well, now, just recently, is in a recent patch for Black Ops 2, if you go into some of the multiplayer maps, uh, now I made some notes as to what they were called. Where did I put those notes? Oh, it's that train station one. Um, it is the one at the train station. There it is. Train station and in the plaza. Yep. They've added these things. I didn't know they existed, but you know like those QR codes where they've got the little blocks and you can scan it with your phone and it's got like a website and all that sort yeah. of stuff? Well, this has kind of got, a, it's like a QR code, but for Snapchat. Yeah, I didn't even know a Snapchat QR existed. No, me neither, but they do. It's it's only just happened in the recent update for Snapchat, so it hasn't been around very long. Yep, yep. And what it's used for is so I can put uh, 
like if I'm a business or I don't know, just a cool hipster guy, I can put this QR Snapchat code thing on a business card and you can scan it and it adds you as a friend or adds me as your friend. Yeah, yeah. And now this this ghost looking thing, it's, well, I say ghost because that's the logo for, yep. for Snapchat. I'm not talking about Call of Duty ghosts, not to be confused or anything like that. This little logo, this little QR code has been placed um, randomly through the uh, some of the multiplayer levels, notably the train station one and the plaza, in the pictures. like They're like um, advertisements on the wall. Posters, yeah, yeah, yeah. Posters. In the little corners of that, you can see them. If you scan it with your, your Snapchat app, it adds a person to your friends list called Dr. Salem, S-A-L-I-M. And then you add that person, and then you can go and have a have a look at some of their Snapchats. I found two of them, and they're up on the, the Aussie Gamers Express Facebook page at the moment, also on the YouTube channel. And it's kind of like a cryptic thing with a voiceover um, saying some things. And there's some some images, like you said, Red. There's like the the helicopters, which give away maybe a bit of a setting for a game and things like that. But what I'll do is I'll just play the the audio of it. Just so you can get a bit of a listen. Listen only to the sound of my voice. Let your thoughts drift. Let the bad memories fade. Let peace be upon you. And that's it. Uh, and I mean, you've got to watch the video to get the full effect of it, but. If you remember back to, I think it was, I'm not sure if they did it for Black Ops, but definitely with Black Ops 2, they did a lot of cryptic shit before the release, you know, with all the, <clears throat> the blacked out markers and things like that. Yeah. Do you remember all that? So I, I, I believe that it's definitely going to be Black Ops 3. Yeah, that, that's just, that's just exactly what I was about to say, because when you watch that video and you listen to it like that with the pitch of it and listen to the sound of my voice, the whole... Uh, thing pertaining to Black Ops 1 was the brainwashing, remember? You're sitting yep. in that chair yep. and you had all the flickering images of violence and everything like that. And you got you get that like with the movies of Total Recall and everything like that. It's It was all the whole brainwashing. Hey? Numbers, Mason. What do they mean? Yeah, 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 yeah. Yeah, exactly. So, and, and um, <clears throat> yeah, I was looking at that and obviously that makes me go Black Ops and I wouldn't be... I'd be so happy. And then when I heard it was Dr. Salem, I thought, oh, this could be zombie related, you know, like, oh, yeah, it could be, could be. Because, well, because no, I, I, I'm more, I'm more leaning towards it confirming Black Ops. But as I said to you, we're watching that. I watched that video just before the podcast again to refresh my memory. And then I caught the snippet of the, the helicopter. Yep. And that looked like a World War Two. Helicopter. I'm like, oh, well, it could be another world at war, and I wouldn't be devastated with another world at war. Mm. You know, strip the guns back to bare minimum with Were your there helicopters in World War Two. Were there helicopters? Yeah. 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 That in Vietnam and shit like that. Oh, yeah, Vietnam, <laughs> Korea, but yeah, I don't know. Maybe just bombers. Surely they had helicopters. When was it? Made, but it made me think of past wars because they're not new Black Hawks and no, yeah, 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 sh shit like those. No, I mean, it was probably more like, things like of Korea, head. like bloody uh, Mash. <laughs> yeah, yeah, shit like that. <laughs> Older, and so I wouldn't be dirty either way. I'm just praying for Black Ops Three because I think I'd really enjoy the campaign a whole lot more with the whole spook stuff and. Blacklist sort of gear. Yeah, I never played. I never finished Black Ops Two. Oh fuck! I, that's, I, I, I shouldn't be saying anything, but damn. I loved Black Ops. I loved the first one. Yeah, you just like, quoted yeah. it brilliantly. I, I didn't like two. I didn't like how it went all futuristic and shit. Yeah, yeah. that's, that's, that's the big it. thing that I I didn't like about it was was it a little too futuristicy, like. Um, Advanced warfare is futuristic, but it's not futuristicy. You know what I mean? Oh, it's less sci-fi, but it's more yeah. set like more in the future and stuff. Like, but with yeah. with Black Ops Two, it felt like it was more not exactly, but more steampunky. It was like futuristic, but head fucky. Yeah, not. It was just like it, it shouldn't have been that futuristic. It just felt like they went too far in the future. Yeah. 
But anyway, it, did, it just didn't grab me. I, I still haven't finished it to this day. I bought the game and I had it, but I didn't finish it. Black Ops 2 multiplayer, best in the franchise. Yeah, you reckon? Yeah, I do personally, yes. Yeah, I, I was on my downward spike. You were Warfare, weren't you? Yeah, well, that that was me. Modern Warfare 2. Yeah, and I'm... That one was the one that annoyed me the most. Modern Warfare 2? Yeah, especially on the Xbox 360 as I was playing it on, and when the people started hacking it. I never played any hacked games. I never had any... Dr- oh, oh. I was playing on PS3 at that time. Yeah, I was having massive issues with the Xbox. You get into the game and it was like 30 seconds to a minute in and somebody had dropped a tactical nuke. And it was just impossible to kill some people in there. And you're just like, you know what? This isn't fun. It's just totally ruined the experience. And that's probably why to this day I just really don't get that much into the the multiplayer. I had a hacker, what, not last night, the night before on AW. Oh. On Advanced Warfare, so I've got some video and I reported him for everything you could possibly be reporting for. Apparently, he pissed me off with his offensive language. <laughs> Stupid fucker. <laughs> uh. <laughs> but yeah, so I've got some video. It, it, you can't seem to escape it. Like, it, it really blew me out the first time there was a hacker in Ghost on, on the PS4. I'm like, come on! But obviously, yeah. it's, it's the coding. It's nothing to do with the hardware. It's, it's all zeros and ones, literally. So, um... Yeah, but I can appreciate where you come from. Nothing pisses me off more, but it would never deter me from playing multiplayer, like, ever. All right, well, look, um, this brings me to what I wanted to discuss with you guys, is what's your favourite Call of Duty game, and why? Oh, my favourite Call of Duty game of all time, and why? Yeah, it could be Call of Duty 2, the big red one, for obvious reasons. (laughs) But other than... If you t- if you take the zombies out of Black Ops and if that wasn't actually a part of it, uh, I'd have to say Call of Duty Three on the PS2 playing split screen or playing co-op for the first time, like with the Medal of Honors in the Call of Duty games. That would probably be that was my my very most favorite first person experience ever. And then <clears throat> oh, you ask for one, you're gonna get three. Uh, <laughs> World at War resonated. It was really cool. It covered a, a, an actual part of history as opposed to all the modern warfares and new futuristic stuff and everything like that. You could really appreciate it. But yeah. uh, if I had to say number one, it'd be Black Ops 2. Oh, yeah. Okay, I'll give you a bit of um, bit of trivia on World at War. Yes. Now, you might remember World at War in the campaign and also the multiplayer that it was a little bit more violent than any of the others. Oh, yeah, man. Bayonet. <laughs> Where <laughs> Japanese down in the holes. But specifically in World at War, if it was a bouncing Betty that popped up into your face, it would blow limbs off and blow your legs off and arms and stuff like that. Brilliant. Yeah, so it was the only game where... Yeah, you had all that kind of violence, and yeah, ever since, there's never been anything like that. So, no matter what it was, a grenade or a rocket launcher or anything like that, in all of the games since World at War, nothing nothing comes off your body. And do you know why? Rating? It was the ratings issue. The, I th- is it the ESRB or whatever it is that, yeah. that, that looks yeah. after that stuff? They threatened that they would no longer rate Call of Duty... We thought, I think they've they've always tried for a oh, well, here it's here it's M M M fifteen or whatever it is, but their M rating or whatever they were going to bump it up, and that would be a disaster for Call of Duty because the the audience is the younger audience. They're the yeah, the so core market. M A. They are. Yeah, so they they were threatened yeah. saying you put that shit in the game again and you're not getting the rating. So Activision, whoever. The, the developers or whatever have quickly gone, okay, we promise, we're never doing it again. So they yeah, backpedaled a fair sure. bit with the violence in the game to maintain that rating so they could continue with their big numbers with sales and things like that. Because you imagine, like, I mean, people would still get their hands on it. We've seen it with GTA Five and all that. But it would it still would hurt. Oh, yeah. Fuck. So they never did it ever again, which is a shame because I thought it was awesome. Yeah. Yeah, so it was more realistic. It's what you would expect when you have an explosion go off in front of you, you know? 
Yeah. Well, if you look at the, the game throughout the whole, well, throughout all of the games that are Call of Duty now, um, there's very little blood splatter. There's very yep. little yep. entry or exit wound. Yep. There's no real realistic <laughs> part to to shooting someone. Like you shoot somebody in the head and you walk past them, their head's fully intact. It's, it's and you've got to do it three times. Yeah. And you got paintball mode. <laughs> yeah. So, like, good on them for for doing it. And that's what's the way that they they market their games and why they continually break records every year that the game comes out. All right. The way so, they so do it. Red, was your you had a few choices, but was Black Ops two? Two. Black yep. Ops two was your choice. All right, yep. Sean. Same question. What's your favourite Call of Duty game and why? Yeah, I, I'm thinking is, is I'm tossing up between um, Modern sure Warfare, the original. <laughs> up, not off. <laughs> Modern Warfare, the original, yep. or, or Ghosts. I loved the story behind Ghosts. I thought it was yeah. really good. It was really clever. But uh, Modern Warfare, the first one, it was really good, really fast-paced. Uh, took you around a fair bit. Might we yeah, say the really last good. the last level in that in the the aeroplane. Yeah. Oh yeah. Oh, do you mean is that was that like the epilogue or whatever it was? Yeah. Yeah. That yeah. Was where cool. you're going through the aeroplane, you had to take everyone out. Yeah. And there's um, I think there's a a trophy involved. Where I watched as it was on veteran level, and uh, you had to infiltrate the aeroplane, get through without taking any damage whatsoever, and it's it is apparently one of the hardest trophies to do and I, I watched this bloke online doing it and yeah once he, he got it after about the 10th try and, uh, and had, we'll... have you been like ever into any of the multiplayer i liked modern warfare 2 until the the hacking and all that kind of crap okay. started never prestiged or anything like that there i just uh i don't like the environment i've never prestiged either i've hit the level cap once mm. and like I've, i think i've mentioned it before that's because Jason, Jason played it on my account. <laughs> yeah. that was I think awesome. I got to the level cap once and it was probably under a similar circumstance. I had a, a friend come over and she had her like 13-year-old son. I'm like, here you go, level yeah. me up. <laughs> yeah. Uh, yeah, that would that would be uh, Modern Warfare 2 for me, the one that um, I got to level 70, but I never actually hit the prestige button because... I've said it before, Jason explained to me, he goes, yeah, so if you prestige now, it resets everything, and you lose all your guns and stuff. I'm like, fuck off. Man, why am I starting again for? Why would I want to do that? That's dumb. Don't do that. So, my choice, my favourite Call of Duty game ever is Modern Warfare 2, but nothing to do with the story, and nothing to do <laughs> with multiplayer, because... Yeah, we haven't touched on this one. Red, yeah. do you reckon in... Just in a real short explanation, how quickly can you explain to me the Modern Warfare series, the story? Oh, fuck, not really well. <laughs> me? If you gave me six days to explain it to you, I'd be struggling, because I don't yeah. understand. Yeah, well, you got what? You got someone being double-crossed by someone who's only double-crossing them because they were double-crossed by the dude that actually did double-cross the first guy, and there's a snow level. <laughs> <laughs> Well, but basically, basically, it's just hierarchy shenanigans and uh, power structures. Well? The Eiffel Tower. Yeah, it, it's it's basically good guys versus terrorists nearly every time round. Mm, someone loses an arm. Snipe, snipe. Wind, blah blah. Dead. Soap people. <laughs> McDonald's. McFish. Yeah. Oh, you got a Pripyat, so. <laughs> <laughs> oh, <laughs> Either way, it's definitely not for its story because I it so was too too confusing. Blah blah blah. For me, it was the Spec Ops. I yeah. absolutely loved the Spec Ops part of the game because it was the most fun that I had because it was co-op. The amount of time that I spent doing some of the missions, and we we're talking about this the other day with uh, Reprimir, my nephew in playing some of those Spec Ops levels. And as he said, we, we weren't playing them over and over because we kept failing. We'd already finished it, and we'd already smashed it out three stars or whatever it was. But we kept doing it because it was fun. Yeah. We enjoyed doing it and doing it different ways and seeing how quick we can do it and all this sort of stuff. Like Specifically, the one it was one of the harder levels where there was probably about, a, about 50 enemies that you had to get through, and you started off down near the boat shed. 
and there was a two-story building up on the top of the hill and then there was like a little woodshed off to the far right on the other side of a dam and then down a hill to the left was uh i can't remember it might have just been down at the bottom of the hill on the other side there but it was all these enemies there was every and then every now and then you would hear a very very quiet beating of a drum do you remember that red not really i wasn't a spec ops bloke actually when, when the drum started that meant get your fucking heavy out or your massive 50 cal because there was a juggernaut coming oh okay yeah, and they didn't juggernaut. wait for you to come to them they ran to you and they had the uh the big machine guns what are they called mini guns, they had mini like guns. An LM yeah, or something like that. so you had what? to quickly take it was about four or five shots of the 50 cal to the head would take them down yeah in all honesty, look, I said I didn't play much. <clears throat> I used to, we used to like the ones that were, you know, you had the ones you could do on your own, but you could still do them co-op, but then there were the ones that were only co-op, like where you had a dude in a helicopter while you were down on the streets of the suburban place and you were running from one spot to another and the overhead helicopter was trying to clear the way for you and everything like that. Yep, yeah, 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 yeah. We've done a lot of those ones, a lot of the co-op specific ones, but um, yeah, and the only other one I remember doing is going through Air Force One. Pre all the the plane that the one. president yeah yeah yep yeah, yeah that's cool but uh, yeah that that's that was my favorite man I absolutely love that and I really want them to bring that back they sort of did it a little bit with uh, a, what is it Modern Warfare three Modern Warfare three yeah but it wasn't it wasn't the same no it wasn't up to spec no it was more just the waves. Mm. So that was all right. But, yeah, look, I'm hoping that comes back with the, the co-op nature of it too because that was so fun. Uh, did you know, did you, did you, I don't know, you guys might have the stats in front of you, but uh, the first, when was the first Call of Duty game released? The first, 2003. Was it 2003? That war yeah. was Infinity Ward, wasn't it? Did they do the first one? Um... Um... Activision and Aspire oh, Media. Oh, Tech 3. Oh, no, it was that the engine? I'm confused. Yeah, it, it developer was Infinity Ward. No, it was yes. Infinity Ward. Don't make me question myself. <laughs> I was right. <laughs> that wasn't very... Don't believe me. I'm fat. <laughs> I I, understandably, I wasn't very convincing with my argument, but it was. It was an Infinity Ward. Kicked it off back in 2003 with uh, Call of Duty. Never played him. My first instalment was four, Advanced Warfare. Oh, wow. Yeah, I played nearly all these. I played the uh, Medal of Honor games. That's what I played back then. Yeah. Oh, how good was Medal of Honor and Conflict Vietnam? All the games back then, all the war games were so brutal. Mm-hmm. And I, I just, yeah, I was always going into it and pressing the start button and loading up my save going, I'll find you, Private Ryan. You know, <laughs> it's just... It was just all saving Private Ryan for me at that time. It's what it was like, yeah. Yeah. Well, I've got a list of all the heavily believed or the, the, the most prominent rumours for the next release, if you'd like to hear them. Absolutely. And a few of them I reckon I could squash out within my own and be confident to say that it's not wrong, not right. But here's the rumours about Black Ops 3 in inverted commas. Current gen only. Doubt it. Oh. Uh, Nah, not yet. You got you. It, uh, nah, it's going to be current gen only, I think. Oh. Yeah, cool. <laughs> so, uh, you though, they can get away with it on last gen. Two years. Yeah, well, they reckon. The, they reckon because what the PS PS2. I know we're talking multiplayer and online connectivity and stuff like that, but the PS2 hung around for ages. In the Xbox, I'm not too sure on. Well, I'm going to say I'm going to say this is the last Call of Duty that's cross generation yeah i reckon That's it will be two or two you might get one more infinity ward i don't know Next I'm, one, gonna, reckon... I'm gonna put it out on a limb and say that this one here won't be cross-platform and it'll be used as a console seller comes out around christmas time it Usually does first first weekend of november yep downhill into to christmas it will sell consoles and yep. that's what they're going to want to do it's two years and we've sold a fair amount of of consoles so far with the the current gen 
and this is just going to be a massive push to get everybody off the old gen because then they can stop wasting money in developing for old gen and That's focus on exactly. current. Exactly. Fucking very well said. Here's, because here's you... another suggestion. Microsoft yeah. pays $10 p- billion dollars and it's an Xbox One exclusive. Well, they've already got the exclusive when it comes to uh, Call of Duty. Yeah. And they've just re-signed that for another four fucking years. Well, 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 no, they don't have exclusivity. Correct that. You know what you're They've got the exclusivity for the first month of all DLC. Yeah, which is shit. It doesn't matter. I don't think that matters. Oh, fucking annoys the c- out of me. Excuse my language. <laughs> <laughs> okay, oh. pushing on. They reckon the graphics are going to be twice as good as Advanced Warfare. Fucking get Kevin Spacey back then. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, campaign to be open world with linear missions. It won't be Call of Duty. Though. Do you reckon they'll be brave enough to to try something different? No. They were going to do... I think it was... Oh, I can't remember which game it was, but one of them was meant to be third person. Yeah, that got canned. Vietnam. Call of Duty Vietnam. They pulled the pin on that. Yes, they did. Uh, Jetpacks just, and... Sorry, or just, oh, yeah, you, you, you think that... Um, Possibly, the, like, if you were going to say your open world kind of thing, if there was, say, like a world map and you chose your route through the game by going to the different locations, you chose your your route to to uh, the, the the end game, if you will. Rendezvous, a, b, you make your own way there. Wait, no, I don't think so either because there's too much emphasis on multiplayer, which well, that'll take up two thirds of the disc. Call of Duty prides itself and is is made its name for its cinematics and its 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 uh, theatrics. You you can't have that sort of stuff in an open world game. No, you got your tunnel shooter, yeah. So jetpacks and exos will remain, and jetpacks and or exos some helping apparatus to help you move around faster. I hope I, I personally think Exos was what made Advanced Warfare shine, made it different. Yeah, it was good, but what, like, are you making Advanced Warfare 2? <laughs> Giving the people what they want. Mm, they're, they're basically, what they're trying to do is to get the, the online multiplayer faster. Exactly. There's more money in esports now than anything else, really. Yeah, but that's all well and good, but I think they should come up with a different way to make it faster because leave that for the next Advanced Warfare. Exactly. (laughs) Although it's Uh, three years away. Switch to different characters in single player, somewhat like GTA V. Oh, that could happen. Yep. Well, it basically does anyway with Advanced Warfare. You play Soap and then you play Markarov and... You know, so you kind of are doing that anyway. Yeah, you just don't have the choice of when. If they go to that, maybe they could. Uh, Exosuits will have wall running ability. Oh, well, it's not Black Ops 3 then, is it? It's Titanfall 1.5. Yeah, that's it. (laughs) Now, this is a big one, and this has caused quite quite a stir. Zombies to have standalone map packs. That itself is understandable, but uh, the publisher, the developer Raven, are to assist after the initial map pack release. I don't see that happening. What do, Why? You, what do you mean? Like a standalone game? No, like standalone DLC. Like map pack, their own map packs. You know how at the moment you buy a map pack and you get four multiplayer maps and then one zombie map. Yeah. Um, apparently you'll be able to download two or three zombie maps and no multiplayer maps sort of thing. Oh, okay. Gotcha. Well, that's fair enough. Well, I know a lot of people that would prefer to sit there and play zombies all night than multiplayer. And yeah, I know yeah. the people that do the same, the opposite, the same. So, Yep. Yeah, because that's cool. I, I, had, I had 16 additional maps for Black Ops 2 only because I wanted the four zombie maps. You know, I'm downloading an extra... Well, what we're looking at now on current gen, one map pack is 15 gig... I would have much preferred just download the 5 gig for the zombies and leave the rest. Yeah, because you don't need them straight away. Yeah, but is this going to introduce two season passes? <clears throat> Probably. Yeah, go at it. Right, what else? Uh, custom map editor for private lobbies and an ability to share amongst friends. What, make your own maps? Yeah, multiplayer maps. Oh, yeah, as long as it's better than the Trials Fusion map editor. <laughs> 
you just went from real high to real low. Yeah, but as long as yeah, <laughs> yeah, I'm I am all for that. I would love to make a map. Yeah. As did long you as... have a go at the Far Cry Four one? I did. Yeah. Yeah. Ooh. That's not too bad. Yeah, I, I made a couple of uh, maps on there, and I tried to get you guys to play it, but you guys are so up yourselves, you couldn't be fucked having a go. That's right. <laughs> At least we don't need to sugarcoat that with an excuse. Yeah. Well, that's it. <laughs> <laughs> the pick thirteen. I'll need with that one. <laughs> <laughs> the pick thirteen system will return. You understand what the pick thirteen is, yeah? Yep. Uh, thirteen no. things that you can equip. That's exactly right. No up, but no upgradable score streaks. I do like that in Advanced Warfare, but they don't need to be Advanced Warfare. Uh, dynamic weather and elements on all maps. So basically, at the moment, they're making Call of Duty Titanfall Battlefield. <laughs> Keep in mind, these are all rumours, so some of these are going to be really squashed out. I've squashed half of them out of myself, but I'm uh, bringing them all to you guys anyway. Uh, they're going to make Raid and Nuketown remakes. That will definitely happen, and they'll just slap a fucking $5 price tag on it. That's pre-order. Be a pre-order. pre-order bonus. Yeah, yeah, pre-order bonus. Maps are larger than Advanced Warfare. I don't see that happening, because then you've got Ghost again, and Ghost was just renowned for camping. You know, So I reckon that'll stay aligned with Advanced Warfare. And last but not least... 16v16 and 32v32s. That'd be cool. Well, yeah. Shit fight. Yeah. Won't happen. Won't happen. Absolutely Probably not, though. 32 versus 32 on Nuketown. <laughs> oh, <laughs> I'll awesome. win that. <laughs> awesome. I'll play that for sure. You just won't run it. Just, just be like friggin' World War right. One. Blow the whistle out the trenches and <laughs> just get nailed. <laughs> that, that's it, mate. That's the list of the most prominent rumours going around on Reddit at the moment. All right, nice one. There's some good ones, some bad ones, and some I don't give a blind fuck about. So let's go into What's That Sound? I think it's time we stop, children. What's that sound? Everybody look what's going down. All right, so uh, last week we had the God of War 3 intro. I think you got that, Sean. Yeah. <laughs> what about Rusky Big Musky? Did you see his answer? Of course I did. <laughs> we don't often get one where he doesn't get it right. And I'm like, <laughs> I just thought it was quite humorous that he said, Oh, I was thinking it was the yeah. good intro, but then that got me thinking, and I think it's that. So I can't, what was his other suggestion? Oh. I can't remember, but he said just something else, and I wrote back to him. Yeah. Oh, that's right. He said because of the conversation, it's uh, some epic music from Bloodborne. I wrote back to him saying, this is how fair we are at Aussie Games Express. So you sure you don't want to go with your first instinct? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that's what you get get for thinking, Russell. That's what uh, you get that's uh, yeah, God of War 3, the intro there. So uh, that was it. I don't think anybody else had a crack at it. I don't think anybody else was correct anyway. So what we'll do, we'll uh, have a listen to this week's What's That Sound and see who can get this one. Oh. Wow. Go again, please, and thank you. Wow, yeah, real easy. I so want to say... I reckon it's an Apogee game. Apogee? <laughs> no, I'm stumped as... I'd say, I'll say Doom. Doom. No. No, I didn't think so. No. God, I thought this would be easy. You guys call yourself gamers. I have it one more time. You can have it. <laughs> I'm fucking Rain Man's work here. Fuck. It's like a weird laugh at the end there. It is a weird laugh. Mm. Weirder than yours. Yes. That pitch little trill gets me as well. You haven't um, edited that at all. No. No. I always tell you when I've done that. Yes. Um... That would be rude. Yeah. Mm. And, and we, we're not in the habit of trolling. Sure we, but a laugh. Yeah. Um. Oh. Do, 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 do. Oh, oh, oh. <laughs> <laughs> oh. Yay, Red! 
No, I, I I knew it was like something either old school or old school remade or you know what I mean. It, that's why I said it sounded like it sounded very apogee. Yeah, okay. and then 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 Sean went what what. All right, if anyone uh, at home thinks they know what that sound is, then feel free to send us a message to our Facebook page. And if you are correct, then we will send you a free game. If you are <sighs> one of the, uh, if you're picked. It's kind of like, nah, fuck it. This week, if you enter and you are correct, you're getting a free game. Oh, there we go. Happy Easter. Mm, Belated. That's, that's it. Belated Easter, Easter present. Just print out the, the, the game that I send you and coat it in co- chocolate and eat it or something. I don't know where I'm going with that. Or, or put your fingers... Oh, no, that's a CD. Damn it. <laughs> <laughs> put your fingers make a bum on the Bloodborne character. <laughs> But bump, but born, but born. <laughs> yeah, so I'm giving out heaps of free games this week if you want to uh, enter. You know what? I might even just give you a prize if you just enter and you're wrong. Send me a message saying that it's fucking Call of Duty for all I care. I'm <laughs> game. <laughs> I'm gonna make seven accounts for Facebook later. <laughs> <laughs> Well, now that we have come to the end of the show, please take the time to like us on Facebook at www.facebook.com slash AussieGamers2012. If you go to Twitter, follow at AussieGamers12. Twitch, AussieGamersTV at twitch.tv. Stitcher, TuneIn, Radio, iTunes, all on the smartphones. You can go there, search Aussie Gamers Express. You can download our podcast directly to the device of your choice. This is the way that we recommend that you listen to the show. You can subscribe or download directly to your device, all that kind of jazzy stuff. YouTube, Aussie Gamers Express on there that will find our uh, YouTube channel where you get access to all the, the videos that are currently getting uploaded getting done red and nico did a pretty good one this week where they're talking about bloodborne and all that there's uh plenty more of those to come hopefully uh the website has been semi-launched if you go to www.aussiegamersexpress.com you can uh check out our blog with all of our reviews and all that kind of stuff on there so that's www.aussiegamersexpress.com if you'd like to send a snail mail, PO Box 130, Cranebrook, New South Wales 2749. Did I forget anything? No, I don't think so. Not a very no. good show, actually. All good. Well covered. All right. Uh, mm. All good. I don't really have anything else to say. No, I, I need so. to go take some more cold and flu. <laughs> oh, yeah. poor Red Sick. Good on you, man. You yeah, know, it's all part and parcel living in the but fuck all of Australia. Let me just quickly check something before we finish the show. Let's open up this app. Red, 15 days champion. Yeah, man. We're going to fucking... The couch is never going to have so many games played on it. You're going to what on the couch? Really wrong. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> that sounded really, really wrong. 15 <laughs> days until I get my ass on a plane and land in Tasmania. Yeah. With a land of where it's okay to have sex with family members. Yeah, I told Luke if he had to wait <laughs> at the airport to put a hat on and sit in the corner with his back to everyone because you'll get a big crowd of people around him in awe and amazement that he's got a full head of teeth. Yeah. <laughs> it's a mainlander. Ooh. <laughs> it's <a> claw. <laughs> the claw. Joy story. Oh. All right, uh, I've been Luke One. I've been Thornton. And I've been Ray.